John, thanks to you and Molly for that kind introduction. Uh, I can't really imagine that any of you can recognize my voice, uh, though it's been with me for some time and through two stints at EPA and a few other places. Uh, as it turns out, I've been sworn in or sworn at more times than a member of the Gambino family. I was an assistant attorney general the first time I was sworn in, uh, then at EPA in 1970 and finally again in 1983 as administrator. Uh, and in between, I was FBI director and deputy attorney general. I've lived in a few places as well and done a few things in my lifetime, but I'm now proud to call Puget Sound my home. Good afternoon. I hope you enjoyed your lunch. I'm Bill Ruckelshaus. I wish I could be there with you today in St. Louis, but unfortunately I have an assignment out here in Puget Sound recently given to me by the governor uh, to help clean it up. Uh, I'm the chairman of the Leadership Council, which oversees the responsibilities given to a new state agency by the legislature and the governor in just this last session. It's our mission to spearhead a massive effort to restore Puget Sound by the year 2020. The governor asked me to chair this council, uh, which will help guide the work of the leadership. I'm here today because Molly O'Neill and Region 10 Regional Administrator Elon Miller extended an offer that I, I really couldn't refuse. Molly thought it might be interesting to use our situation here in Puget Sound as a real life case study at the symposium. She said that she was willing to try something really different, innovative, mobilizing as much of EPA's relevant information, tools and expertise as possible during just a day and a half right here in St. Louis. That's content combined with speed. It's, it's got to intrigue all of us. Molly and I thought this approach might be the very beginning of something valuable for Puget Sound with practical applicability to other regions. I think she's absolutely right about that. Now, I feel I'm as computer literate as the next guy, but in preparing for all of this, each of some once familiar terms seemed a little odd to me. Molly said we should use mashup for this experience. Mashup is what I thought happened to the EPA administrators when they made decisions that nobody liked. In any event, that's what we're gonna to do today. For those of you who haven't visited our corner of the world and Puget Sound, let me take you on a whirlwind tour to get you acquainted. Puget Sound occupies a good deal of the northwest corner of Washington State. It's an environmental treasure, the engine for a good deal of our economy, our backyard playground, and home to four million people. We've got heavy industry and world-class ports, we have fjord-like waterways and 2,500 miles of shoreline. We have island archipelagos. We have major metropolitan areas. We have 200 different kinds of fish. We have 26 species of marine mammals. And of course, we have people, amazing people. It all looks great on the surface. There's troubles beneath the sparkling waters of Puget Sound. We have widespread sediment contamination from decades of industrial use. We have water quality problems from point and non-point sources alike, including toxics and nutrients. We have endangered species of salmon and marine mammals, and the ecosystem's food web is in jeopardy. We have widespread habitat loss, degradation, and fragmentation. Human and wildlife demands on our sources of fresh water are beginning to outstrip supply. And let's not forget people, human health, socioeconomic vitality, and cultural impacts are all of real concern to us here in this region. It's not like we're aiming at a stationary target either. Other pressures are coming our way. We're projected to welcome another 1.4 million people in the next 13 years. That's by 2020 in the Puget Sound region. It swells our population to over 5 million people. We also know there's another big dynamic out there, climate change. I'll just say that it's real, that we're seeing changes now, 
and that adaptation to these changes will be reflected in our work. We have to account for those and other moving parts to inform the design and protect the durability of our solution. We intend to put into practice for Puget Sound two of the fundamental approaches I so appreciated and strongly promoted when I was EPA Administrator, both times. The first is founding our decision on sound science, gathering all the relevant information and analyzing and communicating it is essential to our success. While we already know a lot about Puget Sound, many important gaps in our knowledge remain. We need to tackle those. The second involves engaging our communities in problem solving. Polls show that a majority of people here in Puget Sound don't fully understand that the Sound is in serious trouble. We need to educate them, particularly our young people, and encourage them to lean in to our effort. We also have 115 cities, 12 counties, 15 federally recognized tribes, groups in 19 watersheds and dozens of state and federal agencies, not-for-profit and private sector companies, all of which either want to be involved or have a stake of some sort in the actions that we're going to be taking. Our ultimate success depends on mobilizing individuals and organizations. They are their engines for real change here in Puget Sound. You've heard about our problems and the approaches we intend to use Governor Gregoire and the state legislature have devoted several hundred million dollars in just the next two years to begin restoration work. A detailed action agenda is due next September from the Puget Sound Partnership, that new entity that I mentioned, uh, and that, that action agenda is supposed to prioritize, and implement, and track the progress of our work. So what do we need? Well, it's four things, but let me put those four things in context. And that is the responsibility that the Puget Sound Partnership has to hold all agencies of government accountable for their portion of the task necessary to restore the health by 2020. And that, that accountability function is the, is the most important function that we have as a partnership. And it means that each agency of government, including EPA and other federal agencies, state, local governments, as well as tribal governments, will tell us what it is they're willing to do in carrying out their task as assigned by legislatures or the Congress or uh, local governmental agencies uh, to accomplish this overall assignment of, of restoring the health of Puget Sound. We then agree with those agencies on what the benchmarks or indices of progress are along the way. So what do we need? Let me boil it down to four things. One. We need better access to a wide range of environmental and other information held by dozens of entities to strengthen our collective effort and encourage collaboration. Number two, we need better access to tools and techniques that organize, analyze, share, and communicate that information. Three, we need better access to strategies, best practices, indicators, and lessons learned developed by others addressing similar problems throughout the country. And four, and finally, we need to better engage, involve, and inspire the public, our partners, and our stakeholders to care for Puget Sound because this is where we live. This is our place. This is our home. So whatever you can bring forward by leveraging your own store of data, information, and tools is of real interest to us out here. Please go to work, we need your help. Molly, I really appreciate your willingness to take this on, this, this experiment, this high wire act and extreme social networking and programming. And I want all of you to know that I'm not expecting grand solutions or a glitzy problem solving effort, but I do think this could be the beginning of something valuable to all of us out here in Puget Sound and hopefully to those of you who are working hard on similar problems elsewhere. If we could have a kind of a networking through the internet of interchange between people working on similar problems, telling one another of the solutions that they found or the kinds of issues that they're addressing uh, in trying to solve those problems, it could be helpful to all of us. So thanks for your participation in this adventure. I look forward to the product of your work and I know everybody else 
here in Puget Sound does as well. And please have a great time in St. Louis.